Just don't get those dinos mad. Talking about Heroku, I think it may be that the first time you hear that word. And don't worry, I'll do an additional video about that. Promise delivered. So why you should try out Heroku? It would be really cool if you click that like button and subscribe and push the notifications button. Uh, back to the video. Thanks. So Heroku, what is it and why should you care? Well, if you have used any of these lately and wanted to upload your creation to the interwebs, chances are you already googled Heroku out. And yeah, Heroku is just a place to deploy your applications online. So I have been using Heroku personally for quite some time now, and if I do a dashboard or some kind of MVP demo for a client, I would usually deploy it to Heroku and then share it with the client just because it's easy to use and I can share it right away. And it's free, mostly because it's uh, free. So while editing this video, I figured that I didn't show you any applications that I host on Heroku myself. And I just think that showing something that I host already there may help you understand what you could deploy yourself or what tools you can use to build your first web application. So today we have three applications here, uh, two of them are based on Python as you can see indicated here and one is based on Node.js. Uh, the Python ones are done with Dash and Dash is just a collection of packages for Python to build dashboard web applications and well Node.js is the language of the internet as they say. <laughs> So we can start with a simple Dash application. The first one is just an example app that I built uh, essentially for YouTube to show you guys how easy it is to do a dashboard application using Python. You can check the video here and you should be able to build the application and deploy it to Heroku in something like under 30 minutes. You can just enter a country code here and then it should update the data on this dashboard. And here you can just see the general view for all the countries. Well, at the moment, the top 10 countries for the current pandemic. So here you can see the data is updated and now we can see the case numbers in US. The other application is also a Dash application, just a bit more complex one. Uh, the complexity of it comes just from the amount of parts it needs uh, to actually work. It's uh, something I did for a client, a financial startup. I haven't done a video about it just because it's a client's request. So the client is just a financial startup, not to main, name any names. Uh, what we look into is the financials of small and medium companies. You just upload a bank statement or you connect it, uh, the data via bank link. And then you can go deeper into actuals of your uh, company. You have some sliders for the time ranges. You can do some planning on the categories as a whole. and then do some comparison on how good is your planning versus the actuals. And yeah, that's uh, basically just a lot of data for a company to look into. And at this point you might ask, well, why you use Dash to do these things? Well, I use Dash simply because it's easy to code and it has a lot of pre-built features. Like, let's just look at this graph here. You can see there's a couple of categories which are quite big. So the APD one, general administrative costs, and then consulting fees. So I don't really see any other categories because we are just so small. But what can I do is just click those three away. And here we have it. We have all the other categories which are smaller ones. Uh, plotted for us in a bigger resolution and if you want to check like a couple of months now instead of the whole year you can select that and here you go you have another increase of resolution once again and it's all pre-built 
and I don't really need to code for that that much so this is why I like it and I suggest you try it as well so the last application the Node.js application requires me to use my camera so I'll just need to shut off the capture device yep so here's the whole panel of the application when you have one you just click open up if you want to open the application it loads so what this application does i have a video about it as well you should find it there it tracks your pose while you are sitting in front of your pc and it checks if you are uh, if your back is straight or are you slouched so you just add examples of you sitting straight by clicking and holding the mouse key the same with slouch so we just slouch a bit yeah add some examples that's it start the application if you're sitting straight the score goes up if you're sitting uh, slouch the score goes down it goes down up to yeah and if you sit uh, slouched uh, for a couple of seconds it will notify you as hell so yeah these are the three applications that I wanted to show you. Uh, two of those are built with Python and one of those is built using Node.js. As I said uh, in the video before, there's quite a few of frameworks and languages that you can use to build web applications that you can deploy to Heroku. So yeah, let's get back to the video. <laughs> so why there? What's so special about it? Well, it supports the full web application, meaning the front-end and the back-end. It supports Python, which is the main language that I use. And most importantly, as I already said, it's free. Well, and easy to use. And last but not least, it was the first thing that I found when I typed in the search bar where to deploy my Python application. So yeah, I've been using it ever since. <laughs> Being free comes with its limitations, of course. And just to name a couple of them, there are only five applications that can be deployed at any given moment, only two dynos available to you, and the app limit in size is 512 megabytes. If you want to check all the limits, I'll leave a link down below, and if you find any that I missed which are really important, please mention those down in the comments. As long as you are using Heroku for hobby projects or small-scale projects, the free dynos should be fine and enough for you. But wait, what are dynos? Well, as Heroku says, dynos are isolated, virtualized Linux containers. So essentially it's just a container which contains your application. Now, regarding the easiness of use, there's a simple three-step way to get an online application. And step one being is build the application. I know it's hard and I know it's it takes time, but hey, no application, no sharing with friends. So if you haven't already built one, I suggest you check one of my videos. And if you already done that and have the built application, then one, one last step for you. Step two, make sure that your application meets the requirements set by Heroku. So before deploying your application, there's a couple of requirements that you have to meet. And those really depend on the framework and the language that you use. Just to mention a few is dynamic port setting, some specific required files, or just the general 512 megabyte size limit for the application itself. Now, if you're gonna use some tutorial on how to deploy or build an application and then upload it to Heroku, most of them discuss the specific limits on the specific language or framework that you're using so you shouldn't worry too much about that and the last step well it's the easiest one so deploy it there's a couple of ways how to do it you can deploy it from your local machine or you can deploy it for github since i myself store all my code in github anyways i just deploy using the github since it's easier to me but hey to each his own if you want to deploy from if you want to deploy from your if you want to deploy from your if you want to if you want to if you want to, if you want to, if you want to deploy from your local machine then do that and if you want to deploy from github 
you can do that as well. So that's all. Your application should be already deployed. You will get a domain name when creating the application. So choose wisely the name when creating the new app on Heroku. And then you can just uh, share it with friends, uh, share it with us here in the comments, or just use it for your personal own use with any device which has a web browser basically. Just don't get those dinos mad. And uh, yeah, there's not really much reason not to use Heroku because it's free. And as I presented to you, it's fairly easy to use. So if you watched till now and you like the video and you haven't clicked that like button, please do now. Do the same with the subscribe button, notifications button, share it with friends if you think we might find this interesting. And yeah, that's gonna be it. And I hope to see you really, really soon.